Yeah. You're good. Yeah. Is that all right? Would you lighten and stuff? Like you're gonna see the ball spot. Mixing your knee is not gonna help. It's only me as a bird. Mixing your knee is not gonna help. Just the general. I'm sorry to do. Right, Nick, what? You ready? Yeah. Hi, my name is Anthony O'Reilly Jr. and I'm the director and writer of this uh, film, The Hitmen. So The Hitmen is about two Irish hitmen that are sitting in a car uh, waiting on a call to do a hit, all while reminiscing on old hits and stories they've done together. It's basically inspired by Pulp Fiction mainly um, from Samuel Jackson's character and John Travolta's character. I thought what happens if I can get that type of style and that dialogue and make an Irish version of it, you know? Um, so it was really good to do, real challenging. I started the script in 2015, and I finished it in 2021. I kind of went off the script as well for a good while, and then came back to it when we all had a meeting and decided what film we're gonna make next. So I'm Nicola, I was the producer of The Hitmen for the Dream Factory Productions. Um, I spent a lot of time preparing this film along with the rest of the crew. We started auditions back in March 2020. So what are you doing today on the first day of actually preparing for the Hitmen? We have our to-do list. Hmm. That's only for today though, isn't it? Yes, as you can see, some things are done. Yes, all this. That's only like a little... That's a, This is only for the audition though. Yeah. Mostly for the auditions. Yeah. What are you doing here? So what are you doing right now? So now we need to make a list of all our locations. Now we're just looking at a few locations. We went to our fourth one right now down by um, a Canal. And we're in this house right now just looking around for the interrogation room scene. Um, I like it so far and I think we could possibly use this for the interrogation room. There's a lot of space for everybody from different departments to come in here also. And um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just just happy that we're finally going out and we're actually we're doing it as well, you know. And uh, this is the first day of scouting locations and we're going to be starting the book dates officially. It's May 1st. Um, as you can see, Lee probably put it in the edit and somewhere. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I'm, I'm actually, it's, everything's coming together now and it's, it's getting more and more exciting. Uh, poor Robert over there had to do some manual handling. But, uh, but uh, yeah, grand. So yeah, we're gonna look around and go to a few more locations. Uh, we have to look for uh, different scenes. This scene here is potentially for uh, Michael Kelly, young Ben Walsh, and also Vanessa Watts, uh, the Russian for the interrogation scene. So I, I, we can do a lot in this area. So yeah, anyway, I'm gonna walk down here now and take a piss. Yes. <laughs> right, nice. We need to do the audition poster. We need to do the audition monologue, make a list of all the characters, and then we need to finish up the grammar of the treatment and the character analysis and the script. We had to delay them then to September due to COVID. So we spent two full days um, auditioning the crew, or sorry, the cast for the Hitmen. How's it going? My name is Anthony O'Reilly. I am the one of the co-founders of the Dream Factory Productions. Um, so what I done was uh, we have an upcoming production called The Hitmen. It's our next uh, big short film. Well, this weekend myself, Anthony, James and Nicola came up here and we held the auditions for The Hitman. We split the characters up so me and James were in one room and Anthony and Nicola were in the other and they auditioned some while we were doing the others to try and get it done quicker. I myself still have not gone for an audition so it was a bit weird getting into it but I actually found it as quite a learning curve for myself because I seen the way people performed when it's gone to an audition saying who they are, why they love acting, what they do, everything like that and it was actually uh, quite beneficial for myself to uh, learn and see how auditioning is actually done. What book is that? <laughs> yes! Man, that was good. That was brilliant. That was brilliant. Dead and all. Dead and all. So... Yeah. Pretty good. <laughs> that was good. I know about what it is. Yeah. Yeah, sure look. That was good. That was, no, that was good. Drop, you, you prepared your drop and everything. <laughs> uh, it was actually improvised. Good! Yeah. <laughs> oh, nothing wrong with like that. It. Nothing wrong with that. He's not afraid. That's it. That's good. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Um, 
Yeah, no, because we were. I was asking him yesterday about himself and a bit of background so, so we don't really know about Sean's yeah. background yeah. and stuff. Cool. Hi, I'm Nicola. I am the producer for the Dream Factory Productions, and we're currently working on the Hitmen. So for the auditions, we had to um, put out a poster online to get um, people to audition for the movie. We had to sort out all the audition forms. We had to prep the folders. Um, you know, we had to organize all the time slots and give car- the people their character synopsis and the treatment and all that kind of stuff. We then finalized um, the cast around the end of September, October, and then we started rehearsals in January 2021. Uh, you nervous? Yeah, we kind of. Uh, I've never shot anyone before. Is it as bad as everyone says it is? Uh, no, not really. It's way worse. <laughs> Come on, man! Let's go get the bad guys! <laughs> <laughs> that, that works there, I think, for that line. <laughs> It's very, it's very enjoyable. <laughs> and and you're not expecting it either because no, Michael's so like serious. <laughs> that was fucking brilliant. I don't even know how you'd explain that to write it down. <laughs> so it's literally been going for a year and a half now and we're not even close to finishing yet. So it's been a long time producing the film and making a film, but hopefully it'll be worth it in the end. Why did you jump back when my partner reached into his jacket pocket to get his wallet? I am. Um, I thought he was um, gonna. So I'm gonna shoot you? Hello, my name is MJ Sullivan. Um, I'm an actor from Dublin. I've been acting for about 32 years. Don't mind me. What was your name? Lee. 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 Yeah. Lee, how are you? Good, yourself. Make sure you get the right side. <laughs> right side. Dead. Started off uh, amateur acting in various um, groups in town and swords, and then I moved out to the Millbank Theatre in Rush, which I'm still a member of. Um, uh, I left Aircom, which is now Air, uh, back in 2002, and I took a fist at working as an actor full time. Working on The Hitman was great because of its so well organised. Um, we started back in November, I think it was last year, went for auditions. And the, even the whole audition process was fantastic. You knew who you were up against, which I liked. And um, then we rehearsed for a long time, which again is unusual for a, um, a smaller theatre company or a smaller film company. The whole filming the set was so uh, professional. Um, well organised, friendly, focused. Um, I just had a great time and uh, I was so glad to meet such a wonderful group of people. Yeah, so the Hitman, this is the official script here. Uh, we finished it on the 9th of the 2nd, 2021. And it's like that. It takes two men to make a hit. Nicola made that. She done that, yeah, so it was good. Um, so we're doing, uh, the, the scenes we're doing today is scene two. Scene 8, scene 11, and scene 14. Um, James is still over there, meditating. <laughs> uh, we're doing scene 8 now, and this is after uh, old Ben Walsh is telling us about his past. There's a newcomer here tonight, and I just want to be the first to say from all of us here that you are most welcome. Essay title, that's in the fight for a week of fire. It's going to look so good. Mm. Slay! Slay 2, scene 8, take 1. <laughs> Sorry, I already made it. Do it. This is the board here. I think I can. I'm rolling. You're rolling, Sean. Sorry. 
It's like one, same two, take one. So we're out here right now, it is day two uh, of week two. Um, so today we are filming uh, the opening scene um, with um, Rebecca Fisher. I am playing Michelle Robinson. And how are you finding the day so far? Good, it's been really fun from the get-go, um, getting into character, getting the costume and her makeup done. Um, we've been doing kind of all the lead up to the gory, dramatic bits, so I'm excited to get stuck in, get a bit of fake blood on me. Cannot wait. And have you got much done today? Um, so we filmed the first half of uh, the scene, all the kind of her meeting Jake Daly, all that stuff, and uh, soon the hitmen will be introduced, so I am buzzing for that. And do you find with your character that you can relate a lot to her? Um, yeah, I think there's an innocence to her, a bit of like a naivety, defo me, um, she clearly is a bit of a fashion icon, no more than myself. Um, but yeah, I think more so I'm a little bit grittier than Michelle. She's a little bit of a crybaby and I, um, I, I think everyone will see that when the movie comes out. <laughs> Jesus. Um, yeah, so today went very well. Um, we're actually 20 minutes ahead of schedule. We finished early and we're here since about half seven. So uh, yeah, it's a really um, productive day. What do you do to tackle the pressures that come with your work? Um, well, I mean, there's a few things. Obviously, uh, I can't really say there was a lot of pressure with the, the Hitman because the set and the environment and everyone involved has been so generous and so kind and it's been a very funny environment to be a part of. I know I've had my fair share of laughs at the expense of our lovely director, Anthony O'Reilly Jr. You don't get sarcasm from me when we're... Really don't, so bad. Don't say so. Anthony, I'm Yes. Look at the fucking camera. Hello. Oh, shit, you're so but yeah, I, I suppose I, I've I've never really struggled too much with kind of pressure, and I kind of like being in kind of uh, like being in the kind of pressure zone, for lack of a better word. And I like having that element of you know stuffs on my shoulders, and I'm going in there and kind of almost proving people wrong. And so yeah, the pressure never really has been something that I've been a major issue for me. I've always really enjoyed kind of having that and still being able to achieve whatever I set out to do. Uh, Yeah, we should be finished with your time, shouldn't we? Yeah, I think so. I guess so. Well, a bit about me. I'm originally from County Antrim in Northern Ireland. Um, I used to be a boxer before I became an actor, and that's how I got into acting, was um, I got a role in a boxing film. What's up with Sandra? What? Sandra. What happened to Sandra? Who cares? You gotta fight! I care! <laughs> And that set the seed and I just went on from that. And I have three lovely children and a lovely wife. And I live in Boyle in County Roscommon. And my role in the film is Michael Kelly, who is a no-nonsense um, killer. Takes out people, doesn't think much about it. That's, just, that's his job. Um, and that's a little bit about Michael, I think. Well, I know, Mike, I'm not much taller than you. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, yeah, I, 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 I'm going to hear the act. We're going to need Alan or. Uh, oh, yeah, Alan's. Alan's. Oh, another lad. Good cop, bad cop. How are you finding today, Connor? So good. Well, I've got a little drink this blue spark in me. I'm ready for anything. This is blue spark. Now I'll read the instructions after I've drunk it. You will die within minutes. There you go. <laughs> You have to. Well, no, that's the no, I can see all. You pay to see. Everything oh, right. is, I can see on the internet you for free. <laughs> oh, now, no, when no, you were in the bathroom, went in your head, did you have to buy a little rub there to make him a wee, wee bit large? Yeah. You could need it. He just doesn't look at me. That rub, like, oh. Yeah. Okay. I, I just. Probably that um, doesn't do it. My name is James Byrne and I was the assistant director on the film The Hitman and I also played the character Billy O'Shea. What would you want to say to those who have watched The Hitman? Um, I hope you enjoy it. A lot of work went behind it, both cast and crew. It was the biggest production from the Dream Factory to date and we're all very proud of the work that went into it and we hope for the best of it and does well in whatever film festivals that he ends up going into. Hello, 
I'm from Donegal, but I've been living and working as an actor in Dublin for like the last eight and a half years. In The Hitmen, I play a drug dealer. And yeah, I have an interaction that goes, you know, a bit awry. But I really enjoyed playing it. It was great fun. And yeah, I'm sure you'll enjoy it as well, the scene. So Tommy, how was it working with the Dream Factory Productions? Oh, it was great. I really enjoyed it. Great. And I've said it to a few people that I learned more from you as uh, the Saturday I worked, the full Saturday we worked, than I did in a lot of the films that I done. I got great experience from you because I thought you included all the actors and even the uh, extras mm. in it. Mm. And you know, you asked the stuff and was I was delighted with that. I thought it was great. Normally, they wouldn't, uh, I know has done big films now, they wouldn't do that, especially when you're an extra, you know. But you was included us, uh, great, and so I think that's a great thing that you have to your credit, you know, doing that. Well, my name is Kelly, and I play Vanessa Watts in the film The Hitman. What attracted you to this role? Mm, the fact that she wasn't a good girl, she was like the bad girl, <laughs> which I recognise myself more in. What would you want to say to those who will watch The Hitman? Mm, get ready to have a laugh, <laughs> a big laugh. <laughs> and to see a very professional work. Uh, I just have a regular mind. Because I just want to do it. Wow. Like that. Squeeze me, I'm looking better. Wait, I'm, I'm gonna get um. Can you get a video of sure. you? Yeah. <laughs> I think that's yeah, the nickname. It's me thing. being an actor. Did you say I had a pussy? Hold up, hold up. I'll hit the road, Jack. Well, we're already having a raid in there, so. We're all groovy. Uh, we gravy, baby. <laughs> You're in the compass. <laughs> I need to edit overall. Yeah, like, do, like, do you never see her wet her in her hand? Because her hands are tied behind her back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, she gives two at the end. Yeah, okay, you just don't need to take over your mouth. You're going to have to look sponge. Okay? Just let me know. <laughs> just like get the tape and like use Puzzle. some hairy arms, but like get it on some of them and put it on their arm and keep pulling it off. I do it for And like just put it all over her arm. Here's one she can use my arm because my arm, they're, they're shaped. So. Yeah, we should plug it in now or should we leave it for a bit? Hello, how's it going? So uh, today, sorry, tonight is the night shoot. Um, it's the first time I've ever experienced a night nice shoot and uh, making films and stuff like that as well. Everybody seems up to it, everybody seems energised as well, which is good, no one's asleep. Um, so I'm just writing this out now for James, the assistant director, and we're going to get everything ready. We're lighting everything up outside for our first shot. Uh, Nicola's over here now, and she's, she's getting prepared. We're doing the interrogation room scene. Um, it's the Russian scene where we have Keen, Connor, and Vanessa and Kelly, I should say, who are playing Michael, Ben, and Kelly. Or yeah. Vanessa. I keep getting negative mixed up. But yeah, so we're going to be doing the hallway scene first and then we're coming in here to do the room scene. Um, it shouldn't take long. We're booking the location from 9pm to 9am, so we'll see how long it takes. Hiya, uh, today we are shooting uh, scene 10, which is the interrogation scene. Uh, where I meet the woman of my life, uh, Miss Vanessa Watts. Um, Vanessa. She's quite a sexy lady, and I fall in love with her, and we make mad, passionate love. And Michael becomes a new man, and that's it. This is my favourite scene, and I can't wait to get ready to rumble with Vanessa Watts. <laughs> that's it, baby. This is the first time we get to see Michael in love, and um, so you know, that's a. <laughs> 
put it this way, there's one, there's one moment in particular in this scene that I'm really looking forward to, and I don't know how I'm going to be able to keep a straight face. Also, you know, I don't know if this will make it into the behind the scenes, but I'm going to fucking kill Anthony. There's a fucking, there's a, there's a fucking wrestling ring down here. I'm going to fuck, I've already given him a suplex. <laughs> That's how you have to get there. You have to do the, the hockey, ready? Oh yeah. If you fall, I'm not in short for you, so. <laughs> that is not Guinness. Uh, That's the option. Shikinish. Shikinish. Was that actually real? Yeah, yeah. Get a picture of this. Um, oh, Jesus, scary. He hasn't even noticed I got my eyebrows done for today. I got my fucking eyebrows done. Yeah. Reach for her, yeah? She does that. And then where she's going to attack you. Oh, Alright, first positions. Sound. Sound. Speed. Camera. Rolling. Slate. Slate 8, scene 10, take 1. Yeah, this is my Instagram. Instagram. It went really well, to be honest. Uh, we arrived here at 9 pm and we are supposed to be here until 9 am. It is only 4.14 p.m. at night and we're finished. Um, just over seven hours. Um, Hi, my name is Greg Young and I was the sound engineer on The Hitman. Well, I think the uh, the scene that took uh, the most energy out of all of us was um, the scene shot here at Black Abyss Studios, uh, as that was shot well into the night, so uh, burned a lot of the midnight oil. Um, also, some of the early morning starts we had uh, around Wicklow Town uh, did require a lot, but it was all worth it, and we got a lot of energy, kind of good energy working with everyone who's involved. So, please tell us a bit about yourself and the response of the... <laughs> <laughs> I planned the makeup looks um, with Anthony and a few of the rest of the crew and planned that out, planned the special effects and helped out with some of the wardrobe and props. Uh, it was a part. <laughs> um, no, it was, uh, I'd actually I'd, I'd heard of Anthony O'Reilly Jr. I have to make sure I'm correct in saying that. And beforehand I, I'd seen some of his work and I'd seen how much effort and energy he put into his productions, which I really liked. I liked the fact that here was this young guy, similar age to me, we actually share the same birthday. Uh, <laughs> similar guy to me, and going out there, doing what he wanted to do, trying to achieve kind of his dreams, and putting his work out there, and that really resonated with me. Um, so, being able to, to, to work with people like that, and all of the cast and crew, it's been like that. It's been such a joy to be amongst you know, young, talented people who actually care. This isn't a, a student film for them. This isn't a passing grade. This is something that they care about. Uh, and that was what drew me, actually seeing people going out there uh, trying to create what they want to create. And yeah, it was just, it's been such a pleasure to be a part of it. And um, also, once I got to read the script, it was very funny and I really enjoyed it. Uh, there's a few scenes in particular that I very much enjoyed. Just when I had a look at the script, I just thought it was great. I just, uh, the writing was so good. Um, the character then being represented uh, uh, twice as a young man then as an older man. Well, first of all, um, I had seen Anthony O'Reilly on the film Ireland a lot. I seen his name popping up a lot, and I seen that they, they were, you know, they were doing more films. I guess this could be an up-and-coming director that I would like to work with. I applied for the role of Michael Kelly, which I was delighted to get an audition piece for. Um, auditioned, um, liked what they were doing. I liked how we, and I had a good, I had a good meeting with the with Anthony and and the team, and I felt good about it. I felt good about my first audition, and I was thrilled to get um, a call back, and even more excited when they told me I got the role for it because they had sent me the script uh, in between that, and when I read the script, I goes, this role is any actor would want to do this role because of you know the emotions the different emotions goes through it and also the storyline was fantastic and who doesn't want to be a gangster um sometimes actually more more so with this but when i'm actually acting not as much but like straightforward conversation i actually kind of seize up a bit which is a funny thing if i'm acting i'm okay but like this i don't really like as much
Right, so I was looking for certain characters playing the main character. And Connor Hamill, when he was um, doing his audition, he had the look for it. But there was something about the main character, Michael Kelly, that I needed. He is psychotic. You don't know how to take him. One minute he's friendly, next of all he'll just snap like that. And when Connor done his laugh in the audition, it just literally, right there and then I knew, right, this guy has a look, he's very good at acting, and that laugh literally embodies and literally just shows the whole character in one, just from that laugh. Uh, with Kane, um, Kane, at the start, Kane was kind of very hard, not very hard, but he was hard to get. He, he has to be kind of, you know, he's the funny type of guy, goofy kind of character. And, uh, what I wanted was, is that when I seen him, I goes, right, he has the look for it. What is he like acting? He acted, I goes, right, he's very natural, very good at acting. But there was something about him, he just reminded me, like he embodied that character as well. And when we were picking, um, after the auditions, when we were picking them, I was saying it to the crew, I was like, listen, we can get anybody we want. I want Connor Hamill, and I want this uh, Keen guy. He will literally, trust me, he will bring the comedy to life on screen. I, I know it, I have a feeling about it. And I explained my reasons why, and they said, you know what, go film. We all made a decision, go with Kane. I said, thanks, you won't regret it. And I swear to God, the two of them work so well together on screen. Connor plays his part very well, and Kane plays his part very well. And I think the combination between the two of them together, that's, this is the, one, the main reason this film works so well. So I'm, I'm very happy that I cast these people. Is this one, and then yeah, twelve is the getting the stuff out, and then thirteen or is the thirteen at the yeah. Beer, okay. So yeah, we'll just do we'll do the the mayonnaise one. So. Come on. Do you need it from here, bro? So, okay, I'm thinking to, to take uh, one even from here. What do you think? Like a, of an actual, like the whole. Because I want to show the car, you know? Yeah. Like the, the old car is yeah, like nice. So we don't have to remove this. Yeah. 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 So let's, let's do you need that first? Yeah. Then, yeah. I thought the cast was phenomenal. Um, there was a big process I saw that went into uh, casting for this, and um, they really went through everything, went through over 200 applications and found the best 20 people they could. I even saw in some of the rehearsals like how much they thought they were putting into all that stuff and all the time they put into pre-planning. And on the day, they just did it, and they, they really knocked it out of the park. I was really impressed. Right, so everybody's here. So thanks for coming as well. I so appreciate that. Um, I just want to say that this is going to be the final rehearsal until we fill up our scenes. Um, so this is this is why we have these all here. Um, also, what we're going to do tonight is we're not going to read the, script, the description. Um, we're just, Nick is going to read each scene, the start of each scene as an interior kitchen, you know, the location. And you guys are just going to be doing this a dialogue and acting it out for everybody to see. And um, remember, he's all working so hard for these past few weeks, and I just want you to show everybody else how much hard work he's doing is also okay. Um, and also, Lee is going to be recording this session because it's going to be for behind the scenes also. Well, having to reproduce like 
sex in audience in front of a stranger. Yeah. <laughs> it's not easy. Yeah. <laughs> it's not easy, but I think after a couple of times we did it, yeah. I was kind of laughing at it instead of being nervous. Um, well, I'll tell you right off the bat. Um, I think what helped a lot was uh, we did a lot of um, meetings over Zoom, so I was able to get to know Kane a little bit better than when you just show up on set and you just meet this guy for the first time and then you go straight into it and you're... So we had a chemistry, we, had, we were able to build up a chemistry from the start, uh, which was good, and we bounced off each other really well. In my opinion, we bounced off each other really well, and I think it's... I haven't seen any of the, the footage yet, but... Um, just being on set, being in the moment, it felt really, really good, and I think it should come across that way uh, on this big screen. I think, kind of almost immediately, there was a great sense of rapport between the two of us, and we really built a lot of chemistry. And uh, he's <laughs> he's fucking he's very funny, he's very mad, but uh, I think the relationship that we've developed as people is almost similar to the relationship the characters have between Ben and Michael um, and we just have a great we bounce off each other and you know we build up a great rapport and he's you know he's very funny to work with and we have a great laugh on set and I think that translates to the interaction between the characters so um, yeah no, he's brilliant to work with. Was it, I was on set for a day in um, for our scene with the men's group and it was just great um, it was so professional out there. I mean, all, all I had was one day, so I, I had a great time with all the different people who were working there. I was so glad um, when another young man came in to, uh, to watch. Um, I don't think I have just one memorable moment. I think every single day we filmed was amazing. It was great to work with the cast and the crew. Um, there were so many highlights for me and you can literally see it on our Instagram stories all our highlights are there so um, at the Dream Factory Productions so you know the whole journey was great I think you know the cast and crew put in such effort to make the film um, and it was just great you know I can't think of one moment I think it would be basically <laughs> I was there for a whole long day and I just enjoyed the banter um, I can't really give too much away what happened because of the film, but it was the banter between takes, doing the scene itself. I just enjoyed being in the company of people I got on well with and could work with and have a good laugh with. Like uh, that was great fun. I mean, I couldn't really narrow it down to just saying it was overall a very good experience. Being in the car, going with the Wicklow. And uh, seeing this, like, what was it, like 1980s, the car, and the blue car was absolutely, it was so cool to see it, uh, to be in it. My feet were far too big for the car, I couldn't really fit in it, and I shouldn't be struggling to fit in many things, but I couldn't fit in that. But getting to shoot that entire scene, um, so we worked really hard on that, and we'd put a lot of effort in that, and that was a really, um, a really great thing to do, and, and just get that done. Um, and then also the final, the final scene, um, that we filmed was the final scene for my part in the film. That was really nice because it was a really nice moment just to kind of send off the character in kind of the right way. So that was another incredibly memorable moment. And the penis. Can't forget that. I got to hold a fake penis. It was really fun. You have no idea how fucking hard I had to hold back from my juvenile humor. I think they're getting the penis out for me. I'm gonna show you the penis. Look, it's in a plastic bag, you can't really see it. Oh, it's kind of sticky. Well, I mean, if it's a sticky penis, it's doing the right thing, isn't it? Look at that. Fucking, look at that. <laughs> Man, like, we started off with six people. It was me, Nicola, James, Sarah, uh, Craig and Rebecca as well. And to go from making a short film in 2019 to now with a cast and crew of 40 people, I, I said it to these guys, I goes, trust me, the lot of ticket will come first, then we'll do this Christmas, 
and people will see the quality then from this Christmas. They'll see the storyline from the lotto ticket. They'll see the quality that we're gaining and we're having from this Christmas. Widespread will be very good. Won't get us anywhere, but trust me, it'll be enough time and we'll have enough things that we made to show that we're real and that we're dedicated to our work and that people want to work for us. I told them, at least about 40 or 50 people are going to work with us by the time we go on the Hitman. And it happened. You need to believe that. You need to, you need to see that goal. You need to go reach around. You need to believe it. And I think that by the time we make our first feature film, our second feature film, maybe. We don't know. We'll see. Um, we're going to have a lot of people working with us. And more people are going to believe in us. They're going to give us more funds. And we're going to do it independently by ourselves. And I think that we can only go more and more and bigger and bigger from here. So I'm, I'm very excited for the future and what our films are going to be making. Some of the makeup for The Hitman is some of the, my favourite looks I've done so far in my life. The, one of the looks included a black and green smoky eye, which I've never thought of doing, which now I'm, I can't wait to do it on myself. Normally I'd go for red and black, but for something different I wanted some green in there. And then... There is another smoky eye, which you'll see on Kelly, and that was just all black and a little bit of grey to smoke it out. And then Re Rebecca Fisher, she had a very subtle, very innocent look on her. And I also love doing that because normally I'd plaster makeup on, I'd do a lot of makeup, a lot of prep, but she didn't need much makeup anyway. Her skin was flawless. And she looked very innocent in her outfit as well. Some of the special effects turned out a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Some of it was challenging to do and it involved a lot of blood. We spent a good bit of the budget to get the makeup because you have to buy high quality makeup, which is expensive, which helped everything to come together and made the whole film, really. That'll scare Alan. Hey, I'm an influencer, can I use some free dinner for my followers and whatnot? You know, and they're like, no, fuck off. And you know what actually you know, the dinner and all that, they're like, the, uh, actually, I don't want to cook. It's just perfect. It's perfect. It's suck there, yeah? Trying to scare you with it. I was more puzzled. He he seen he seen seen that before. Yeah, yeah. No, not a shock. Didn't really work. Another day at the office and there's several penis. Yes, I would love to work with them again. I think they're a very very uh, professional outfit for such a young crew, and it's great to see uh, Anthony's only young man, but he's he's um, he's great, great confidence. Um, also, the, uh, he's experienced. Be even though he's young, he's very, very experienced because he's, he's set up young and said, I'm going to do this, and he has been doing it and making films for the last, whatever, I think it's eight years or something like that. So it's great to see somebody with so uh, much confidence and then building a lovely team of people around them because uh, everyone in the crew was young. Okay, the cinematographer was a little older, but everyone in the crew was so young and yet so focused and so, um, so brilliant at what they did. Oh yeah, definitely, yeah, I'd love to do. Mm. Delighted to work for you, so taxes are very good, excellent company to work for, and very nice, everyone's treats you lovely, mm. which is which means a terrible lot, I think. Mm. Like, uh, Liffy Sound now, when I went in there, was the same. Mm. They were great to work with, everyone helped me, great in there, which is which is great when, the, when that happens, mm. you know, that you're accepted straight away into the company, and you get on great with everyone. Like, I come in with all the lads there, I didn't know any of them only from the two or three meetings we had on Zoom and they were, they were absolutely lovely and very nice and news as well directing it and everyone connected with the film the makeup and everyone was lovely I have to say that these guys are very very committed very passionate very creative and talented and most importantly good fun like Anthony O'Reilly, his imagination is very, very good. So I'm looking forward to seeing what else he can write. And hopefully he'll be in, I'll be in his next film as well. Hopefully, hint, hint. Absolutely, I would love to get the chance again. Hopefully, let's see what their next job will be. 100%. Well. 
I'm already working with the dream factory but <laughs> Anthony App to do an interview. Uh, now, as I said before, it's been an absolute joy to work with them. Everyone involved is, is so giving, so kind, so generous, and has made the environment on set, the atmosphere on set, amazing. Uh, and as an actor, it, it, it's so comfortable to, to be on a set like that. You don't feel judged. You don't feel, you know, the pressure in a sense. You feel very welcomed. Everything feels very open. Uh, you can put out your thoughts and put out your opinions. So I would 100% in a heartbeat work with the um, Dream Factory Productions again. They just fucking want to pay me next time, yeah? <laughs> I would highly recommend people checking out this film. I can't wait to watch it when it's out. Um, I'd say if you if you like Pulp Fiction, if you like Quentin Tarantino, if you like Guy Ritchie, I think this will be right up your alley. So um, definitely keep an eye out for it. He's gonna laugh. He's gonna cry. He's gonna be confused. You're going to be kind of feel sick to your stomach in some parts, but all around you're going to enjoy it. Thanks, James. Thanks very much. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks very much, Greg. Thank you. Thanks very much, Connor. Cheers. Okay. Tommy, thanks very much for taking the time to come out, answer a few questions, give me the answers. Okay, thanks very much for asking me, Ray. Thank you. MJ, thanks very much for coming and taking the time out. You're very welcome. Well, Aidan, thanks very much for coming out and taking the time out and answering a few questions. No problem. You're welcome. Thank thanks for you. having me. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks very much, Kelly, for coming out and taking the time to answer some questions. Thank you very much. <laughs> thanks very much, Nicola, for coming on and answering some questions. Thank you. Sarah, thanks very much for coming out and taking the time to answer some questions. Thank you. Thank you. I'll never forget it.